Oh, there, that's better. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope that light back there isn't... I hope that light back there isn't a pain in the neck, but what the heck? Um, I, I just stopped by to say hello. And get a drink. And I wanted to show you my new little dolly. She is my emotional support dolly. Emotional support friend. Oh yeah, that's what I call her. My emotional support friend. Well, see, I make these emotional support pickles. And then somebody asked me, do you make emotional support chickens? And so I looked up emotional support chickens and everything I found, they were knitted or crocheted and I know how to crochet, and I sort of know how to knit, but I don't feel like knitting or crocheting a darn chicken. So I said to myself, so I said to myself, self, yes, that's trash. Pup's getting trash today. And um, so I said to myself, self, you need to make an emotion, emotional support dolly. And so that's what I did. I took one of these here kind of socks, like a little footy sock. It's like a little footy sock. And so that's how I start my little emotional support. See, um, Dolly, well, I take it off of the cardboard. I'm going to save these cardboards, though, because uh, you never know. You might be able to make something out of them cardboards. And so there's the sock. Now, and then, so the first thing you do is you take some stuffing. Whatever you have, if you've got a pillow, just jab a hole in and pull some stuffing out of it. Because this is what this stuffing's out of. It's an old pillow. It was a pillow. Now it's stuffing. Now it's a pillow with a hole in it with stuffing coming out. But that's a lot of stuffing, and I like this stuffing. And so you just fill it up. You just fill this thing up. This is how you do this. I'm going to show you my fast way. Whoopsie daisies. So you fill it up with stuffing. You just get it all filled up. Fill it up. See, now look. This is going to be the front. This is going to be the back. So what you first have to do is you you take and you stitch. I use this kind of thread because this is, I use this cotton, crochet cotton. That's what I use to sew. Well, anyway, I'm not going to sew this one. But anyway, I take this. I can put the thread all the way around this and then suck it down shut tight until it's completely, till it's not a hole anymore. Then it's not, it's an unhole. That's front. Okay, then, okay, now, fast forward to, let's see. Well, I got a couple of them started here. This is where I, um, I, um, see how I sewed this hole shut, sort of, there, on these two fellers? Or ladies, whatever they are. And then I took the thread and and I cinched up her neck. Okay, now let me show you here. Where's my needle? I just had my needle. It was right here. It was right. Yeah. Well, it was right here. Just a minute. Hang on. Let me get my needle book out. I got. I have to, I keep losing things out of my needle book. So I stick. Well, now I dropped the bag in the floor. So I stick. This is my needle book. I make a lot of needle books, but this one I didn't make. This one was made by my friend, by my friend, um, um, Myra, Myra Wolf. She made that for me, and she sent it to me in the mail. And I love her. She's so beautiful. Now, if see. I would use a big doll needle like this, but I really don't need that big of a long of a needle. 
Big of a, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use my doll needle. Oh, okay. Put this needle back in here. Lay that right there. And see, I still have, I got that long thread on there. And so now I'm gonna um, put that thread. Cause see, when I first started doing her, sewing her, the back of her, there's a birthmark right here, but it won't show cause it's on the back of her neck. My whole family's got them birthmarks on the back of the neck, but I think that they're a very common birthmark. And so anyway, that's how you know she's human. But anyway, so then I left the thread on there. Now what I'm going to do, oh yeah, I, I am so grand. I really thought I had everything laid out here. Just fine and dandy. Like sugar candy. But no, I don't have my... Wait a minute. Now I got to um, move this, put this right here. Just a minute. While, oh, I can use this ink pen. This looks like a paintbrush, but it's really an ink pen. I think I can use this. Um, no, I can't. Hang on. Okay, now, then I had to go get my markers. Now, I just use markers because it's, they're going to be fine. But I just use a light color here. And I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a line where I'm going to do the arms and legs. Simple, simple, simple. So, I'm going to okay can you see those lines here I made a line down these are her arm lines you see that now for the leg lines I just put a leg, a, one line, right down the middle. Now, I do this before I start sewing because if I just start doing it and I don't have a line, I'll, her arms and her legs will look like they're all deformed and she was born with deformities. and We don't want her to have any deformities. Okay, now I'll put my pink bunker back in the box and put it right on over here. Now, okay, so now I have my... um my um, needle threaded onto the yarn needle and I'm gonna start I'm gonna start my needle up here I'm gonna just gonna go put it back in up here but I'm gonna pull it I'm gonna poke it out right there at the top of that line see so now that thread just went in there and come out at the top of the line and so then now I'm gonna hopefully my stuffing is in there pretty much accurately um, spread apart you know whatever and I'm gonna go right straight through right straight through her she doesn't she can't fill it she's on a she's on an antiseptic not an antiseptic anesthetic mm-hmm and so and then I'm going to go right there and come back. And I'm going to keep doing this right on down. And you kind of pull it tight. And see there how it's pulling that in there now? See how that's doing? It looks like it's got a little dimple. And so, and then you just keep. Going forwards and backwards. I would just do it right like this, but I can't see what I'm doing then. And and then, you see, then it's out there, and I'm going to go down a little bit, you see. And then just look in the back, make sure my needle comes through. That's why these doll needles are nice, because you get, okay, yes. You're looking for the trash bags. Go in our bathroom and look into the third one, two, three. Third drawer down. We'll have the trash bags. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. Bless his heart. Gosh. If you 
all pray, pray for my papa. Not really my papa, he's the kid's papa. We all call him papa though, but he's just memories getting so horrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then I go back in. And, and I'll go all the way down that line. There's not a line in the back, but you just kind of judge it back where where it goes. You kind of see how that it's coming straight on down there. You can see how it's beginning to take form of her arm. And then you're, you're watching for your needle to come out on the line. See, and then go back in on the line, but in the watching in the back to make sure that it comes kind of in an even line in the back, too. Okay, and then this will show you the basic form of the body and these are so soft these socks I ordered from Timu and they weren't what I thought they were going to be and so but they're working out perfect anyway for my little my little dollies so they're just footy socks now see how it's curving off now now I'm gonna go I'll put one more stitch in there See, and in the back, I'm making sure that I my line is still pretty even. Okay, so now on this last bit here, I'm going to go and take my thread and go around. And so then that will be her hand. Now, if you wanted to, you could even do the sculpting enough to even make fingers. I, I just pull it. Pull it kind of tight there and see how pulling it tight, it just that that's the bottom of her arm or her hand. And I go around there two times. Okay, so then that's one arm. Now I still have plenty of string, so I'm going to go now just put it back in in that bottom in the back. And I'm going to come out. See, you just keep poking until you're in the right place. And now I just come out at the top of that second line for this to a second arm. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to get her. See how her, her arm is all formed right there now? Okay. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for arm number two. This really is not a hard thing to do. It's very simple. And they're so cute. Just hang on. I'm going to show you one that's that I've already got going. What is that noise? I think a bird just flew into my window. Not in my window. On. Attack. Window attack. Okay, so now I'm, you just kind of watch your thread to make sure you're staying in a line in the front, in the back there. And, that, and see, now I just did that with that, like a light marker, like a, a light pink marker. If I had a fabric marker that disappeared, I'd use that. Well, I did have some, but they dried up. I didn't use them enough I guess but the marker works just fine and then when you finish up the doll you're not going to see that anyway now you just just a minute oh we're getting we're getting there Oop! I didn't look at that back I almost poked it in the wrong place and it would have had a deformed arm. We don't want that deformed arm going on. Okay. 
now. And here we go again. Now, this is as far as you really have to go if you're going to, if you don't want her to have legs, if you want her just to, um, if you, okay, just a minute, let me just finish this. Okay, now I'm just going around to the last stitch that goes around. Now my needle came out the thread, and my needle didn't come out the thread, my thread Come out the needle. There's a difference, Elizabeth Marie. There's somebody has a channel. Her name that her channel name is Elizabeth Marie. I said, oh, that's not me. Okay, so wait a minute. I gotta um snip my um end off there. It become frayed because it went through the fabric too many times. Yeah, I gotta be quiet when I thread a needle. It won't thread. It will not thread if you make too much noise. Okay, so now, now I have. Now you can see. You could just leave these the the bottom to be chubby like that if you want to. But if you want him to have or her to have legs, then. Go in where you're where you're left your thread off there at the bottom of the arm and come out to the top of that little line there, that little dividing line that divides her little legs. I don't think my thread's long enough. And then just make sure in the back it comes out sort of in the middle there. And we're doing the same thing along this line now. I gotta get me a different piece of thread. This one's just too short. So I get me another piece on there. Get me another piece right on there. Because that was just too short. I could make it work, but if I can make any job easier, I'll just do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just thought I, you know, we've been making some little dollies lately, and I thought, well, I just want to make something different, and so now I'm going to put my needle through there, okay, and I'm going to just tie it together with that piece that's a hanging in there. And move that out the way. And it's okay that that little knot is there because I'll just cut those threads off. Okay, now I got that tied in there. That's where that's going to start. If my needle was, if my thread was longer, I wouldn't have had to start another piece of thread. But hey, there's a way to do anything. And we're going to do the same way to sculpt the legs. And so... Back in the day, I used to make little, we called them stumpkins back then, and that's been years and years ago, and we made them out of um, the legs of pantyhose, and they were so cute because we made them with toes and fingers and a little butt crack. They were adorable. The butt crack is what really made them adorable, but we didn't really dress them. I would put, like... A lot of them I made were like little nurses because at the time, oh, it's been a long time ago because at the time my mother was a nurse and she worked up at the nursing home and she um, was bringing them to the other nurses up there. And what I would do, it would be just a little stumpkin. And um, my mom's been gone now since 89. Wow. So it was a long time ago I was making my little stumpkins. I still have the book with the directions in there somewhere. But um, I would just, on the nurses, I would just put a little nurse hat on them. A little nurse hat. And in their hat hand 
there would be a some kind of a miniature, maybe a box of Band-Aids or something, but, you know, the old um, kind of Florence Nightingale hat I made for them. They were so cute, and all of those nurses wanted one, and so I made a lot of the little nurses. But I made them in different, um, for different um, occupations and things, because we sold them at our craft fairs, and they sold so very nicely. But the thing better about these, with using the socks, is that um, I could probably do the same thing as making them stumpkins, but the thing with the socks is they don't get runners in them like the, the little um, nylon stockings did. You know, you had to be careful that you didn't snag them because it'll make runners. Okay, now see how I got his, the legs are down there? She's got, like, hips like mine. But she's got granny hips. So now I'm going to go around on that one, too. So I just took the thread was there. I go around. And get that thread around there. And then pull that tight. Kind of makes her look a little pigeon-toed, but that's okay. And I go around there. Oh, I'll go around three times on there just to be sure and certain. Oh, now, see, I didn't look on the back real good on that one. And then it didn't come out exactly where I wanted it to. So now I'm going to just make, make just a little knot on there to hold that in there in place. And then when I want to hide the thread, I'll just let my needle come out anywhere. And then I'll just snip it, snip the thread, and the thread's gone. So now, I'm going to leave this thread on this back just for now. But now we've got the shape. So we went from this shape to sculpting her arms and her legs. Now see, she got like real hippie legs, you know. She wanted to be like me. One arm, one arm's a little longer than the other, but who's looking for perfection? Oh, wait till you see this now. See this gal? She was the same thing, but she now is getting, I made her some eyes and a little smile. She's not finished, though. She's got a necklace. She's got some little ruffle. I love this piece of lace. I went to... I've never seen... It's like an eyelet lace, but it's almost like a denim eyelet lace. I had... Did an auction. I didn't do the auction. I went to an auction. And... Oh, what? That's her name? Um... Uh, can't remember. Rebecca Wills. She had an auction. And she had this one bag full of... It's just stuff. And um, this was in the bag. And I... And I gave $3 for that whole gallon size Ziploc bag of just goodies. And um, this was in it. And this, this piece alone is well $3. And it was good. there was like two yards on there before I started cutting into it. And so, and all she's got on her, and I still have, oh no, I think I got, oh no, I still have a little place here that I'm going to put more patches. More little patches, which all it is is tiny little scraps of fabric and I s stitched each one of those in there independently by itself and just covered her up with them and then what I want to do once I get these right on this side because then I want to cover up right here so that'll probably take two little patches right here because they're only I'm only lose using really small little patches then I'm going to take this 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 here lace again and I'm gonna go around and the bottoms of her little legs like this so it won't look like it's around the whole, whole thing it'll look like it's at the it'll look like ah kitty cat you scared scared the bojangles out of me but see there oh, kitty cat um what did we touch now I don't know what we touched but so she'll have that little ruffle at the petunia at the end of her breeches legs. 
and so I'll stitch I'll stitch that on there okay now I don't know why my phone's look oh there now it's better again I think I get too close or something now her hair I'm not done yet with her hair but um did you find the bags huh tell me again where they at okay you go in the bathroom yeah our bathroom yeah and you look as soon as you get in there on the right is three drawers. Yeah, One, yeah, yeah, two, yeah. three. Actually, there's four drawers. But in the third drawer down is where you'll find the liners. Okay. You'll find them this time. Okay. Now, when I get all her hair in, then I'm going to trim it up. But I love this yarn. This is just all on one skinny yarn. It's... um. Oops. See how that yarn is? It's all the, it, this come from Hobby Lobby. I didn't buy it. It come in some used little yarn. Well, yarn went used, but second hand anyway. And it was it's the what you get over at the Hobby Lobby and it's um I love that yarn. I think it's the name brand. It is beautiful though. But I think it is perfect color for hair. But now, see, I still have, she still has a little bald spot because I'm not quite finished. But when I put her hair in, what I do is I start putting her hair, I make like a headband right here from the middle of this one shoulder to the middle of one, the other shoulder. And I just, that's where I start. And then I just fill in. See, like this, this whole side, that was just a piece of thread. She's not going gray-headed. Now, see, I got that. It's all filled in. But she still has this little bit of bald spot on the back. So I get my needle. And this fabric is so easy to, to sew through. Okay, let me see. What am I doing here? Do I have this ready to go? I, I let this... No, I don't. I get a long... A long bit of... Um, of yarn, I got probably got three yards on this or longer, but um, and, and I leave it doubled and I have it doubled into this like tapestry needle yarn needle, and then I um, I just put it in there like that, and I'll pull that all the way through. I just get such a long piece because I don't want to have to keep threading new pieces. Okay, so there, once I get to that end, and there we have a cat again. Thanks for coming by, Petunia. And then I tie it in just, just one little knot, and then I, I um, cut it, and... Then I continue until that whole, her whole bald, bald spot is filled up. Now, if you've got a hoopster that's going bald, you could do this to their hair, too. You could just sew new hair right through their scalp. Use this pretty color yarn. Yeah, yeah they'd be pretty. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then... Hmm. There she goes again. She just likes to look for stuff. Thank goodness she's not bringing in another lizard. She she goes outside and she catches a lizard. And then she brings it in the house and plays with it until it quits playing. They will quit playing after a while. Then we 